Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my new shop. My name is Keith and I am your host. The Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, on with the show. We have a piece of threaded rod. This actually is a Acme jack screw for a jack stand for boats. Normally this this here is in the vertical position like this or leaning whatever way the jack is. Some of the jacks are tilted. Uh, a pad with a pivot mounts on here and then you have a, an Acme nut with a T-handle on it and you spin it around and you, you can jack this up against the hull and stables the boat when it's out of water and up in blocks. So our customer, actually a friend, and we're kind of doing a favor here, and he brought us the rod, and he procured a nut through McMaster Car, I believe he did, and he started to fit it on here, and then he kind of started working inside here with a little Dremel tool, and, and uh, then he brought it over to me, and and I, I had eyeballed a couple dings on the end of the threads here. Anyhow, I got it to go about about halfway on, and then I took some bluing. This was just like a ten minute check here, a real quickie. Um, took some bluing and put it on here after I filed across the top of here, and kind of determined that these threads just need to be lightly skimmed to give enough clearance for this nut to fit properly. It's almost like everything is right there, but just not quite. And this is a finished Acme nut. And the nuts that actually were used in the jack stand original design, they are pretty slop fit. And also too, this has been out in the field and out in the weather and in the operation and probably falling over. And we might find a little bit more of a ding down in this area here or whatever, but it's just basically needs to have a light skim on it for this nut to spin up and down. He wants to use this to make an adjusting table or a table mount of some kind. So it's going to be a t t something that has to do with a table that's going to go up and down. That's not really worrying about our job. Our job is just the fit of this piece on this piece here. So I'm going to show you how I go about dressing up Acme threads. I've never really shown Acme working, in, either cutting new threads or repairing or anything else. And I plan on actually showing you how I uh, approach cutting Acme threads. And this will be somewhat of the basics for my Acme thread turning practices. All right, let's go ahead and get this into the three jaw right now. We want to put a center in the end of the Acme rod so that we know we can support it out here with the tailstock. Because we're going to work a little bit of this and then we might have to work the whole thing. We don't have a follower rest for this lathe right now so we may have to do it in sections. Normally if you're going to do an Acme, and I've done Acme threads as long as the lathe bed. But you've got to have a follower rest so that you can follow along to create that perfect thread from end to end. Turn on the three-phase converter. And now we have power at the lathe here. Okay, I can see a lot of motion this way here, so I don't know if we're actually straight or, or if we're just cocked in there. We're going to bring this in here like this, real close. Now that appears to be running true on the outside. We're just going to give this some face here.
little oil helps uh, make a nice glossy center. There we go. Okay, now we'll be able to support the end of the shaft. Okay, let's slide this out where we can work on a certain amount of it. We're going to go for about that much right there. We're going to put the center in it. We're going to take a look at the, uh, the run out if there is any. And there is. That's probably some of the problem here. We can feel the scale rock slightly right there. So we have a high in here. So I'm going to put on rollers and we're going to press this pretty well straight. At least straighter than it is now to, to get. We can't skim these threads without these running true and straight. Determine that this is a number four Acme thread because we've got our, our Acme gauge here. This is really kind of a real nice gauge set we've had for a long period of time. And we can stick it in here and we can, we can see that it is four threads per inch. It's a single lead, meaning one thread. All right. This is an old 5 8 tool bit that we ground with an Acme angle on here and we, we ground that to match. Our Acme gauge here. Alright, so I'm going to show you how to set that up. Let's set up for our thread now. All right, we're gonna put in this high-speed steel pre-ground. I don't know the last time I sharpened it or whatever. It still looked pretty good on there. Feels good. All right, and we'll tighten that down. All right, now we don't know where we're gonna be yet because we're gonna twist our compound around. This is this is. You know, for regular threading, I put it in at <coughs> half the pitch, or half the thread angle. But on the Acme, I like to put this at zero here, instead of setting it for half of the 29 and a half degree angle that Acme thread is. This way here, I can adjust 
and come in and clean both sides of the thread one side at a time okay now the only thing about this is that sometimes you've got to modify and put your bit on the other side of your compound here because you got to come back for on my carriage that's as far back as I can come and we're going to go ahead and crank this back as far as we can. Okay, we can come in here. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to align our tool bit with the axis. So we're going to set that angle of the tool bit to match the gauge that surface right there all right now we know that we're square and if you want to double check that you could actually come in here and put your gauge in on the up opposite side of your thread and it should match the same thing especially if your thread has been machined now this is a nice thick plate so you can come in here check and see your center okay we're way way under because it's leaning out towards us now we're just going to eyeball this kind of like center. Okay, let's see where we're at right there. Okay, we're a little bit high. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to drop this down. And then crank it up just a little bit. That is almost dead center. Okay, just a little bit below is what we want. There we go. All right, we're gonna call that working height and working angle. We're gonna double check that, double check that. All right, now we can adjust in and out. Now we're gonna line up with our pitch. Here again, number four pitch. So we gotta put our feed on this and number four. And we'll be there, and we'll be on C and A. <laughs> I keep going like that because I keep forgetting that um, I actually have to have a uh, phase converter rotating to uh, engage power. So we'll do that. All right, there we go. We got the uh, phase converter on. And... C A and we're going to be running a lot slower yeah we can run it about there all right we're going to engage it on on a number here there's number one okay we are timing with it but we can see that we're not in the center of it Okay, we're almost in the center there. That's like on 70. We're gonna set this, we're gonna work it to where we're touching and we're at zero. Here we go, we can engage it again on any, any even number. There we are. Okay, let's come in. We're coming straight in. Okay, set zero there. We're just trying to sneak up. Coming to our zero. And there's number one. They don't have to be one, remember. Um, all right, we're just starting to touch the dirt in the bottom. Actually, the dirt is probably running out more than the rest of it, but, and that is pretty, there we go. We're just touching right there. We're gonna reset our zero. Okay, 
come into our zero. Number three. There we go. There is a high spot, right? I mean, it, it's off center a little bit. Our center's probably off a little bit. We'll, we'll figure it out. We're just touching and skimming right now. Okay. We're going to add just a couple. We're going to give this a little dab of cutting oil. Here we go. There's number two. Okay. Now we're going to back it up so we're actually contacting the back side of the tool. There we go. All right. Just so we get clean all the way to the I'm going to say aft side of the thread. There was a lot of junk in there. Okay. Now we're going to set it up so that we're we're going to be cutting on the forward side of it. But we got to come in here, set it at zero. There we go. Now we can crank it forward till we touch. Okay, we're starting to touch right there. We'll make another pass right there. Pull out of it, come back. We're just gonna go in and set it right at the same zero. Almost. Okay, here we go, even number. Okay. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and test our nut. It didn't take much, it just took a little bit to clean up. Still just a little sticky in a couple spots right there. Might actually be on the, the crown of the thread right there. I filed these, but I didn't file down here. Okay, we're going to slide our lead screw down and we're going to pick that up again and just touch those surfaces down for the rest of the rest of the rod, making sure that our nut will feed down through there all the way. We can leave our nut on here now so that we don't have to pull our tailstock back and forth each time. All right, right here's where we left off and we're going to kind of pick it. We came in and touched so we know we're lined up. So we hit the two, okay, and then we come into our zero, right about there.
Pretty much just getting that rust and the dirt out of there. All right. Okay, we're gonna come into where we're close. All right, here we go. Here's the one. Okay, we come into our zero, and then we come into our backside. There we go. We're gonna pick up the backside now. Okay. Come on back here to our pre area. Come on in. Now we know we're going to be going back towards that side a little bit, so we preset that a little bit. Okay, here we hit the four. Okay, we come in quickly to our zero. Now we come up to the leading edge. There we go. So we're just trying to go in, go to that side, go to that side. Okay, hit it with a little air. All right, let's see if our nut screws all the way down. Okay, I think that's gonna be a little bit on the top here. We're gonna we're going to take the file and we're going to go across the top a little bit with the file. Good to go on that thread. All right, <clears throat> we're gonna leave the nut right on there. We can pull it right out of the way there. Once you grind up a few Acme tools inside for boring the threads, uh, external threads, internal threads is what I meant to say, um, you got them around for life. 
uh, at least I know that I probably ground this particular one here um, back in the oh, 1980s or so. It's not that I do Acme all the time, and not all Acme thread is the same size, and you may have larger or smaller uh, bits for each size Acme. Because some people will grind that Acme thread right to the size, and I actually grind them a little bit narrower so that you can come in and you, you work down to your root. And then I work one side of the Acme and one and the other side of the Acme. And, uh, and then also, too, just like there, if we have to come in and blend a little bit. I'm surprised I didn't have any chat or sometimes when you extend it out a little bit and you're working in the middle. Of course, all we were doing is skimming the dirt and a couple high spots out of there. And that's all it took to make that nut run in there fine. So we'll go ahead and we'll clean up our rusty dirt pile here and get the lathe ready for another project. Well, I hope that little touch off on cleaning up this Acme kind of give you a little bit of setup tips. All right, until next time, get her done.